The Vietnam War was the formative experience for a generation of CIA and military intelligence personnel involved in the Phoenix program. They viewed the military defeat in Vietnam as a betrayal on the home front, a loss of will by domestic political enemies, not a military failure against a nationalistic revolution fought as a guerrilla war. The Phoenix program, assassinating suspected VC sympathizers in a systematic manner, worked well and is the blueprint for the current black operation targeting thousands of loyal Americans using state-of-the-art microwave and radio frequency radiation weapons. The motivation to suppress domestic dissidents and to assassinate loyal American opposition stems from the perception of dissent against the war as treason. This philosophy is stated very clearly in the Mind War paper written by NSA General Michael Aquino. The Department of Defense has a huge stake in futuristic technology that kills by ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, leaving little or no trace. The indiscriminate killing of the Phoenix program continues on American soil. The terms soft kill, slow kill, and silent kill refer to the new way of killing the enemy in conflicts short of war and the small wars of the future. The counterinsurgency doctrine has now been applied to the home front so that the perceived betrayal of the military in Vietnam will not be repeated. The generation of CIA and military intelligence led by Shackley, Helms, Casey, Singlab, Secord, John B. Alexander, Michael Aquino, Paul Vallely, and others have built the perfect beast using selective assassination that leaves no trace. The ability to cull the human herd with silent kill technology allows a few personalities to remake the entire society in their own image. Extremely low frequency technology slowly drives the target crazy with silent sound similar to the CIA MK Ultra psychiatrist Ewan Cameron's psychic driving technique used to break down the target's personality. The new buzzwords at the Pentagon are synthetic telepathy and psychotronics. Another means of attack on targets is the Smirnov patent that uses subliminal suggestion to manipulate human behavior. This patent was purchased by the remote viewing company SciTech Corporation. Emotional manipulation is accomplished using Dr. Michael Persinger's work to remotely project emotional states that the brain entrains or locks onto and emulates. One can broadcast rage or fear at an individual target to manipulate and control them. As if these methods were not enough to torture and murder people, add to this nightmarish toolbox active gang stalking. CIA created cults and other cause-oriented groups are used to induce further trauma in the target by actively harassing them in public in a neutralization technique described in counterintelligence operations manuals that are aimed at enemy agents. In the race to develop a new weapon, it has always been necessary to test it on human beings. Perfecting the latest weapons designed to kill slowly and silently, as well as perfecting the process of controlling the human mind, are no different. Once the weaponry has been perfected on these few thousand people, the same techniques will be applied en masse to the general population and then to humanity as a whole. MKUltra was the secret CIA crash program to develop techniques to control the human mind with the conviction that the keys to brainwashing lay in technology. The agency's brainwashing experts gravitated to people in the mold of the brilliant and sometimes mad scientists obsessed by the wonders of the brain. In 1953, CIA officer Richard Helms chose Dr. Sidney Gottlieb to run the technical service staff. The TSS, through the Office of Research and Development, 
was given the job of developing poisons to assassinate political opponents, truth serum drugs for interrogating spies, and hypnotic techniques to create unwitting double agents, couriers, and robot assassins. Dr. Gottlieb used Nazi scientists and their state-of-the-art mind control techniques that had been perfected in concentration camps using victims of the Holocaust. General Dwight D. Eisenhower gave his personal approval to exploit the work and research of the Nazis in the death camps. The German doctors were brought to the U.S. and went to work for Project Paperclip. These men were insulated against war crimes charges. The Nuremberg prosecutors were shocked that the U.S. authorities were using German doctors despite their criminal past. Under the leadership of Dr. Strughold, 34 scientists accepted contracts from Project Paperclip and were moved to Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. These personalities began to work on human radiation studies, aviation medicine, microwave technology, and MKUltra mind control experiments. The authorization to hire these Nazi scientists came directly from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The top military brass stated that they wished to exploit these rare minds. Operation Paperclip eventually recruited 9,000 Nazi scientists and technicians to help the U.S. destroy the USSR. Some of these scientists were known as programmers, people skilled in the art of breaking down and controlling the human mind. Dr. Joseph Mengele and others experimented extensively with children and adults using mescaline, electroshock therapy, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, torture, rape, and trauma bonding in an effort to control the human mind. Dr. Mengele was so successful using the technique of trauma bonding that survivors today still exhibit a profound affection for their torturer, referring to Mengele as Beautiful Joseph. Dr. L. Wilson Green was a Jewish doctor who the Nazis coerced to participate in their experiments at Auschwitz. This individual, whose code name was Dr. Green, came to the U.S. after World War II and began to experiment on adults and children for the military and CIA. The military and CIA copied the Nazi methodology and began numerous programs of their own. The first CIA program was known as MKUltra. The MK is an abbreviation for the German words for mind control. By 1953, the CIA, U.S. Navy, and U.S. Army Chemical Corps were conducting their own narco-hypnosis programs. To avoid confusion, the dozens of mind control operations will be referred to generically as MKUltra. According to MKUltra documents and sources, the methodology of mind control works best when severe trauma is administered by the age of three years old. Severe trauma, such as rape, applied at the age of three, will cause the personality to split or dissociate in an attempt to shield the mind from memories of events too painful to endure. The psychiatric terms are multiple personality disorder, or dissociative identity disorder and can be produced accidentally or purposefully. The Three Faces of Eve is the true story of multiple personality disorder created by childhood abuse. Psychic trauma and creation of multiple personalities was eventually codified by programmers into a standard methodology and is typically accomplished by forcing children to observe and participate in the ritual sacrifice of animals and humans and inducing further psychic trauma by the means of rape and other horrors. The trauma causes the dissociation. This functions much like the partitioning of a hard drive in a computer. The dissociative state is used as an opening to hypnotically induce an alternate shell personality. The programmer will use hypnosis and triggers to call forth the created personality known as an alter personality. Only 20% of the general population is easily hypnotizable, but trauma at an early age makes people vulnerable to dissociation and thus easily hypnotizable. 
Typically, the programmer might wear a costume, such as a rabbit suit, and sacrifice a rabbit in front of the child victims before they are physically traumatized. The image of the rabbit, a phrase from Alice in Wonderland, or similar paired images are used as the triggers to call forth the alter personality. The method works best when the trauma is repeated around six years of age. A few years later, the child victim's IQ test and personality test are evaluated to determine whether the child may be trained in an assassination, sexual blackmail, drug courier, or other role. The subject can be hypnotized and used for operations, but we would only be consciously aware of the sense of lost time. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb employed these early programmers and concentrated on the use of LSD for mind control and exotic poisons and drugs for political assassinations. He personally gave LSD to an unknowing fellow scientist, Dr. Frank Olson, who worked for the Army Chemical Corps Special Operations Division at Fort Detrick. His job was developing biological weapons. Dr. Olson committed suicide by jumping through the window of a 10th floor hotel. Dr. Gottlieb concealed his actions and the Olson family was unaware of the cause of his suicide until 27 years later when the facts emerged during a congressional hearing on CIA abuses. The link between Gottlieb and Olson illustrates how the different elements of biological and chemical weapons, radiation testing, and MK Ultra were all intertwined. Dr. Ewan Cameron was president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations. He ran the Allen Memorial Institute, which was founded in 1943 with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation. Nazi paperclip scientists made their way into the CIA and military sponsored mind control programs here in the United States and Canada. Some of these scientists were friends of Dr. Cameron. Money for Cameron's operation came from the CIA and was funneled through the Cornell Society for the Investigation of Human Ecology. The systematic annihilation or depatterning of a subject's mind and memory was accomplished with overdoses of LSD, barbiturate sleep for 65 days at a time, and electroshock therapy at 75 times the recommended dosage. Psychic driving, the repetition of a recorded message for 24 hours a day, programmed the emptied mind. The Canadian government settled a class action lawsuit by 250 former patients of Dr. Cameron decades later, but no person or institution has ever been disciplined or punished for these activities. Cameron was the premier psychiatrist of the 20th century. He had studied Nazi scientists at the Nuremberg trials and later replicated many of their methods and sought their assistance in the race to control the human mind. Cameron's mind control experiments were one program out of many run by the CIA, Navy, Air Force, Army, and others.